Bingo and Lakata, we are live here from the Fanatics Fest at the Javits Center. Uh, we'll be here till 12.30, Yankee baseball, the Yankees and the Tigers. Game two of their series in Detroit. And joining us right now, former Met manager, Terry Collins. One of a select group that has taken my <laughs> franchise to a World Series, Terry. Terry, you got to notice, I've seen it all. I became a Met fan in 1962 when I was nine years old. One of the dumbest decisions I ever made. <laughs> uh, the only, the only dumber one was becoming a Jet fan. That was dumber. <laughs> but nevertheless, uh, you know. So I've seen it all. And we, Sal and I were talking about this. Like only you and Bobby Valentine have taken to the Mets to the World uh, to the World Series. We wish to the playoffs two years in a row. You're the only two guys to do it. Amazing. It really Amazing is. Amazing Mets. His, when you think about history it. of the franchise, consecutive years in the postseason, two people. Bobby V, Terry Collins have led the Mets to that. That's, that's unbelievable. We'd have gone three years in a row if we didn't get everybody hurt in seventeen. But twenty seventeen, yeah. right? Yep, yep. yep. And I, it, I will tell you this, John. Seriously, you know, every I can't tell you how many times we'd be in the dugout and we'd, something would happen on the field. We'd say, "Geez, I've never seen that before." <laughs> and right. it, and sure enough, you say, "Well, I've seen it all." Let me tell you. If something else is going to pop up. You said, I've never seen that before. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you and I say this too, Terry. You know, in the early days, you had some, you had some, you hung in there pretty good. It, you know, you were there how many years before you guys finally had that World Series run in well, 2015? Well, I was there four years before we went right. to the World Series. Right, right, right. right. Hired right. in 2011. And remember, too, it was, well, I know you know this, but I'm just reiterating that after the Madoff stuff, and then we know what happened right. there. Right, right. It, it was, it was a, total just washout and wipeout where TC was brought in to basically build this thing up before you guys even started spending any kind of serious yep. money. And I remember the first time, I think, was when you brought Bartolo in and Granderson in 2014, right. I want to say. Yeah. That's when I was like, two, wow. two, two terrific Mets, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Bartolo Absolutely. and Granderson, yeah. no doubt. Yeah. I, I remember my first – I just got the job my first year. I'm in – it's probably my maybe the first or second week when the season started. Joel Sherman walks into me and he says, you know, you do know you're hired – just to get this straightened out, and then they're going to fire you and get somebody else. Is that what he said to yeah, you, Yeah, I, yeah, in my first year. I've been there two right, weeks. Right, right, right. <laughs> How did you handle that? What was the response? I said, well, you know, jobs are hard to get. There's only 30 of them. I'll take it. Right, I'll be here as right. long as I can. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. And that's why we loved you. you. Had that great attitude yesterday when I was asking him to come on. Obviously, TC's here right, and for guys, SMY. We got a panel coming up for yep, SMY Baseball yep. Night in New York. Uh, I was like, oh, you know Joe B, right? And. <laughs> TC, I think you were familiar with Joe B. And he goes, well, yeah, which one of you two guys are going to rip me hardest? <laughs> I did get on you, Terry. I, I, look, I, let me just put it this Joe, way. Joe, I listen to, I, I hate to tell you this, everybody. I listen to the shows. Right. You know, well, look, everybody you. said when you came to New York, don't, right, don't read right, the papers, right, don't right, listen right, to the shows. Right. Let me tell you something. It didn't offend me. You're allowed to have an opinion. Right. You know, there's, there's people I've met in my life that I don't like so much as either. But, you know, you got to move on. That's it. Well, I, the, the image I will always remember of you, I, I, and I, I, I think it was when you clinched the division in Cincinnati and you're running around with the champagne into the fans. That was tremendous. Yeah. I got, I mean, I got I, fined I, for that, too. I know you did, but you know what? <laughs> They, but but you let me tell you, it? Terry, the fans loved it. I know they did. And, and it, when we were in L.A. and when we clinched in L.A. Right, right. I, I mean, you couldn't, I couldn't believe how many Mets fans there were at the game. Yeah. So yeah. I'm, out, I'm out shaking hands, and some guy grabs me and gives me this huge kiss in front of <laughs> And I said, what in the <laughs> heck is right. going on here? Right. There's a lot yeah, of but get, they loved it. And yeah, it was yeah. L.A. We yeah. could go to a and lot And I did it in here. Chicago, too. And, right, You know, right, and I got right. fined for that one, too. And so You know what? It, it was well worth yeah. it. Is there one moment that stands out? We've talked about David Wright coming back. Remember, Joe, the home run when he first came back? And he oh, hit yeah. that bomb in yeah, Philadelphia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That moment or the, the clinching the, 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 uh, the postseason berth against Cincinnati, as Joe said, sweeping the Cubs, going to the World Series. Is there one memory that you have that you hold higher uh, in regard than any other? Well, it's, it's, I mean, when you're a baseball lifer like myself, I mean, Every one of them was big, but I will tell you, game five in Los Angeles, watching Jake DeGrom yeah. pitch, I mean, you know, he didn't have very good stuff that night, but he pitched like you're supposed he to did. pitch. He did. He made pitches. He did it. And then when I brought Syndergaard in to face Justin Turner, yeah. you know, I got a note from Justin Turner when the game was over. He sent me a little text. He said, was that necessary? <laughs> Is he that what he said? Yeah, because Syndergaard funny. threw 102 right. you know, and then struck him out with a 94-mile-an-hour right. slider. And Justin said, was that really necessary? You, so, know, yeah. you, know, you know, Terry, I gotta, there's so many things we could get into. I want to get into the Cespedes, the Wilmer Flores situation <laughs> and all of that. But I, I got a soft spot in my heart for Matt Harvey, Okay. I had some issues with him. He got, you know, he got ahead of himself a little bit. You know, the, the celebrity stuff got to him a little bit. Obviously, we all know what happened. But this guy, man, he could. When he came on the scene, he was unbelievable. 
and that the World Series year, which was the last really good year he had, right? He was solid that year. He pitched game five. You kept him in. I agree with it 100%. I want in a World Series. I wanted to see it. Me too. I, 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 right. I feel so bad for what happened to Matt Hogg. Uh, what, what happened? What it happened? Bro- it happened broke there? my heart, Joe. It broke. What the, happened? The whole issue broke because I was, you know, and I know, you know, he, he, the injury issues. I, I really think the thoracic outlet syndrome surgery that he right, had right. What really slowed his arm speed down and, and hurt his, you know, hurt him as a pitcher. But this guy was, he was the best in the game. I mean, in, in 2013, when he started that All Star game, yep. I'm on the field talking to the guys, and you know, it's about 120 the, degrees that day. Yeah, night. but I, but I was talking to the guys on the field, and I was asking them who's the toughest guy they ever faced. Every single one of them said the guy who's pitching tonight. Matt wow. Wow. Carlos Beltran told me, he said, Terry, I've faced everybody. This guy's got the best stuff I've ever seen. Did right. you know what you were getting with him? Because I didn't from, and obviously you're in the system, you're the manager right, there, right. So you worked your way up, but I, 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 there wasn't that much hype. I remember watching him pitch a game that was aired on SNY when he was with the, the Rumble Ponies or Big Rings, whatever it was, and I was like, ah, eh, whatever. And then, first pitch he threw in Arizona, I was like... Who the hell is this guy? Did you know what you were getting when Harvey came up? That's exactly what I said the first pitch he threw in Arizona. Uh, You know, due to the fact that I spent so many years in player development, you know, I read all the reports. I read all the reports. And so when we brought Matt up, I said, okay, he's, you know, 94, 93, 94, got a pretty good breaking ball, decent change up. And he, that game in Arizona, I looked at Danny Worth and I said, where did this guy come from? (laughs) And so, and this is a true story, and if Matt was here, I could, he could tell you, but he walked in my office about, I don't know, maybe two, he probably started three or four games, he walked in my office, he said, why do you think it took me so long to get here? I said, because the guy that's sitting in my office right now is not the guy I've been reading about for the last three months. Right, right. He said, you know, you're, you're pitching in AAA in Buffalo, you've got a 3-5, 3-6 ERA, you know, every, all AAA pitchers have that kind of, I said, if you would have done, if you would have pitched in, in Buffalo like you're pitching now, you'd have been here two months ago. He, yeah. Because he, he was, I'm telling you, this, this guy. Yeah, he was tremendous. Had the injuries not occurred, this yeah. guy would have been, he'd been a Hall of Fame. And, He's a Hall of Fame. And the thing that I'm sure both of us love about him, Joe, was that he had that. that he did. He wasn't afraid of anything. He was the alpha male. I'm not taking any bull crap yeah, yeah. from anybody, whether it's the Mets yeah. organization, whether yeah. it's the Yankees, yeah. the yeah. Nats, Strasburg. I don't take a backseat to anybody, and that's why I'll always love Matt. And Hall. also the fact that, you know, when his agent there, Boris, was basically telling him to shut it down during the 15 World Series run, he said no, you know. He's, after after I took him out of a game against the Yankees, he said no, you know, because he at that time we had we had innings limits right. on those guys, yeah, right, and so right, right. and Matt came out and he said I'm not going to, you know, I'm not. Gonna, Boris Scott came out and he said well, he's only going to throw 180 innings, and so Matt's, you know, we had to start limiting him right, pitching. So right, and right. Matt was on board. So one day I we were playing the Yankees and he's five innings. He's in the fifth inning. I take him out. He's got a two hit shutout going. The next day he walked in my office. He said. No more. Give me the baseball. Right. And that's why I sent him out there in game five. That's yeah. exactly why I sent him out there. This guy, just like you said, his competitiveness, and when he was on the mound, I mean, this guy was, this guy was the man. He <laughs> walked out there with that. Oh, yeah. And he, he didn't care who you were. Get in the batter's box. Let's go. It's yeah. one and one. Talking to Terry Collins, uh, of course, the former uh, Met manager. We're coming up on 10 o'clock. You're going to stay with us for a while, right, Terry? Well, I mean, we can take a break. Cause I could go, yeah, because yeah. we could go. I got so much mind? To, to get involved <laughs> We'll here. take a quick break sure. and then come back and reset and get to the second part of the interview. You okay with Is that? that cool, Terry? Hey, I know you got nothing to do till 12 o'clock. I don't o'clock. have anything. Yeah, you're, you're hanging time. out. Yeah, I'm, I'm retired. Got, <laughs> I'm retired. I have nothing to do. Terry, <laughs> Terry we got a lot to cover <laughs> here, Terry. You still got to talk some golf. You play golf? You play, right? Of course. I'm down to six days a week now. Yeah. We play three, about three or four I'm playing. Okay. Right. I do have three holes in one, Terry, believe it or not. You do not. I swear to God. You do you, how many do you got? And None. I'm, and I'm not what? good enough. And I'm not good enough to have them, but I do. Well, what, are you playing from the senior citizens tees? I or play what? from the senior tees. Okay. Is that? Uh, of course. You still you, you do that as well? I'm trying to give you an edge here, I TC. I do not. I do not. Oh, okay. no, I do. <laughs> I, I do. I do. I'm well, going to start. Yeah. I, when I turned 75, I told my all the guys I play golf with, I said, you know, I'm moving up a tee box. And they said, like hell you are. <laughs> <laughs> I take every advantage. Yeah. <laughs> all right. We, so we'll take a quick break, Joe. We'll come back. We'll have more with Terry yep. Collins on the other side. Yep. Yep. Beningo and Lakata from the Fanatics Fest. It's really getting crazy here. Terry Collins is with us. All right. There's so much, Terry. The Santana no-hitter. Okay. If, if, if the Mets had had a no-hitter prior to Santana, okay, would you have kept him in the game? Probably not. Okay. Probably not. But, you know, if you know him, and Joe, I know you know the guy. This guy is such a pro. Right, and, right. And, you know, 
and I will tell you, during that game, you know, I'm sitting on the bench. I, in the seventh and eighth innings, I went to him both times. I said, how you doing? I went out, as a matter of fact, I went to the mound one time, and I said, you okay? And he said, I'm going to be fine. Just leave me alone. I'll be fine. Right. And so he deserved it. He deserved it, you know, with his, his background and what yep. he's done, yep. what he accomplished, and the fact that he was such a pro. But, you know what, if there would have been a no-hitter before that, I probably would have got him either because I just knew that right. we, were, we were entering the danger zone with those pit, the pitch count. And that was it. I mean, I think the next game I was at the game at Yankee Stadium was like batting practice. They yeah. destroyed him. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, Swisher, yeah. all these guys hitting home runs off him. Uh, and really, he was never the same after that. You know, Joe, I'll tell you, I, I did a... And on the anniversary of the no-hitter, uh, I came to New York, and, and Johan got me off to the side. He said, hey, before we go in there, I want you to know something. He said, I have no, you know, I have no problem with what, what we did. And he said, Terry, I got to tell you, my arm hurt the whole game. Really? Yeah. He said, I, wow. I'm just going to tell you that right now. He said, I knew I was at the end. He said, so I really, th I just want to thank you for leaving me in. He said, and I have no problem with, with the results of it all. Now, ultimately, would that have been your call or just him? Like, if you were like, hey. Yeah, you're at this amount of pitches, 120, whatever it is. Maybe we should sit you down. He's still gonna say, "I'm, I'm not doing this." No out. Yeah, he told me. He told me that at the at the anniversary. He said, "Terry, you do know I wasn't coming out of that game." So <laughs> right, yeah. right. There was nothing you could really do about that. I had that. seven guys warmed up in case he got gave up a hit. I, I, <laughs> I got to tell you this, okay? Because I this bothers me, okay? Yeah. This bothers me. You know, Beltran did hit a double down on left field line. Uh, too bad. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> And but you know I, he's I close with Beltran. Say, <laughs> I, I, what's that? He's close with Beltran. Oh, I'm very close with I love Beltran. Beltran. I do too. He got yeah. so hosed in this Houston thing. What oh, a joke. Yeah, they screwed terrible. him. Terrible. Everybody else is okay, but not him. It's terrible. I, I don't want to get yeah. into that. But it does kind of, as much as I you know, loved finally getting a no-hitter and getting rid of that man, that I just can't get that image out of my mind. And the especially the, the Beltran. Hit, Beltran. Yeah. 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 Well, it was a foul I, ball. I can't hear this foul. That's yeah. all I can say. <laughs> You know, I, I remember I had an argument one time with an umpire. They, they, there was a play at second. We were playing the Yankees. Right. There was a play at second base, and the umpire called. They picked Tahad off second base, and the umpire called him safe. And then he said, "No, he's out." So I went out to the out to second base. I said, "What was that?" He's, "I got, I missed it." I said, "Too bad." You know, live with it. That's <laughs> right, what we, right. we have to do. Right. And he said, "Ah, we got to get, we got to make it, we got to make sure we get the right call." I said, "How many times have you struck a guy out on a three-two slider that's seven inches outside?" He said, "Well, it happens." I said, "Then change that once in a while." And they kicked me out of the game. <laughs> right. so, I don't know why. Well, what else did you say? Well, yeah. something else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. You didn't tell him what a lovely day it was. I, it was a really <laughs> lovely day. Have a nice time. And then, Joe, as I'm walking off the field, they were, you know how they changed the right. bases. So I'm walking off the field, and they, they're changing first base. And I, so the old first base is laying there, and I kicked it. Well, you know, there's, there's metal. There's half the bottom of the right, bases. Right, right, right. I thought I broke my foot. Oh, but I couldn't, I couldn't limp because I was mad. I said, right, don't right. limp. You cannot limp. you right. got to walk off. I know both of my toes are broken, but you just got to walk off with, you know, with your head up. Right. But, yes, right, you know, there's, there's some things happen in a game sometimes. You, go, <laughs> you get inside and say, why not? I remember when I was coaching for Jim Leland, right. we got in a fight in Los Angeles with uh, Kevin Gross, and Kevin Gross was 6'5", he was a black belt in karate. Leland goes at, charges the guy, he's at first base. Kevin Gross reaches out and grabs him by the neck, and Jim's trying to hit him, he can't get to him. because. So when the game was over, I said, what are you going to say? I don't know. He said, the closer I got, I'm thinking to myself, what the hell are you doing going after this guy? <laughs> right, right. So, yeah, you do stupid things once in a while. You do. Yeah. We're talking to Terry Collins, the former man manager, uh, Beningo and Licata, live from the Fanatics Fest here at the Javits Center. There's so much with you. The Wilma Flores thing, which is just <laughs> one of the classic moments in the history of the Mets. You know, we're all the, that night he was traded for, who's the guy from Houston? I forget yeah, his name. Gomez. Gomez, Gomez. Gomez right? Carlos Gomez, right? Yeah. Tell me about that. What, did you know what was going on? Did you know that clue. this trade had been done? Not a clue. I'm, I'm on the bench, and, I, and all of a sudden, Wilmer's going in the on-deck circle. Right. And I hear the people yelling at him. Oh, we're going to miss you, Wilmer. And I'm thinking, what the hell are they talking about? So now David Wright, who's off that night, he comes out to the, he's standing next to me. He said, you know, he's been traded. I said, what? He said, they've traded, we traded Wilmer Flores. I said, no, we haven't. He said, Terry, it's all over TV. I just saw it. It's all over. We've traded Wilmer Flores. I said, David, we did not trade <laughs> wow. this guy. He said, Terry, I'm telling you, we, he's been <laughs> traded. It's on TV. They're announcing it's everywhere. That's why the people are yelling at right, him. I right. said, David, you see that phone right there behind me? I said, that goes to Sandy Alderson. And if, that, if Sam, this guy's been traded, that phone's going to ring. And I said, he has not been traded. And David said, well, I'm just going to tell you, he's been traded. So now, Wilmer comes off the right, field, and right. he's crying. Right? Right. So oh, I, yeah. I take him yeah. down the little runway at the, at the dugout. I said, listen, you've got to straighten up. 
You, you know, you, you have not been traded. Well, why are they young? I said, Wilmer, you got to be, I need you. You know, I, I'm not, I right, might have been right. the only shortstop I had back then. <laughs> right. and, and I said, you got to go out and play. So now he goes back out to shortstop and he's still crying. So now the phone rings. It's saying, he said, you got to get him off the field. I said, is he trading? He goes, no, but he's crying. <laughs> I no, said, what the hell? Is that what it was? <laughs> I said, well, what do you want me to do about it? I gotta get, so now i got to take him out of the game because he was crying. I said, jeepers, creepers. Thank God that trade fell through. Yeah. Oh, how about that? And, how cl- and, and, and the Cespedes thing, I love Cespedes, by the way. i got to tell you, I'm a ba- i got a Cespedes thing at home. I, I, I love him because he only was there a couple of years, but, man, was he unbelievable in that 2015 incredible, year. Incredible. It was crazy. How cl- I mean, it went right down to the wire. The, what was the thought pre- were you freaking out that this might not happen with, with Cespedes at the end by the trade deadline? You know what? I, I, and I've told Sal the story a hundred times, and, I, and, and I, Sandy and I talked about it, but I was in my office on the trading day of the trading deadline. Right, right. And my phone rings in my office. It's Jim Leland. And he's, you know, how, you know, you guys you know, hey, big boy, what are you doing? I said nothing. He goes, well, hey, I'm going to tell you something. We're going to trade Cespedes today. Get him. And I said, well, Jim, I don't have anything to say right, about right, it. Right, right, right. So, and it just so happened, Sandy's sitting right where you are in my office. Right, right. Right. So I hang the phone up, and I said, that was Jim Leland. He said, they're going to trade Cespedes today. He said, get the guy. And Sandy just nodded his head and said, oh. Right, right. Sure enough, when the game's over, he walked in. He said, guess what? I got Cespedes. Wow. wow. I said, you got to be kidding me. And, that's, and I'm telling you, that I, I, had, I do this podcast now, and, and I had Sandy on. I said, you know, I was shocked that they right. made that kind of a trade because we weren't really, you know, we, we'd made some moves, but this guy, was, it was the turning point, and Jim was right. This guy was a game changer. Oh. What's the name of the podcast? Harry Collins Podcast? The Terry Collins Show. What yeah. else? It's you, Terry Collins Show. It's catchy, great. It's a catchy title. Yeah. yeah the oh. um, what, what's the ump's name again? I forget. The, Tom Hallion. Yeah, yeah. Tom Hallion. He had him on. Right. Uh, you got to check it Not out. Not a big fan of umpires, by the way. No, well, this was the one, the famous viral one where TC was caught on the hot mic after Cinderella right. got ejected. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Real quick on Cespedes to finish up. We've heard some things, uh, you know, behind the scenes how Cespedes could be difficult. Different kind of guy. Yeah, was it difficult when he first got there to manage? No, not when he was first there. He was. Uh, he showed up every day. He wanted to play. Matter of fact, we had a game. We were playing pretty good, and we lost a game, kind of like the other night when the Mets lost. We had a game like that, and and uh, and so I walked in the clubhouse when the game was over, and I said, "Hey, what's what's with the long faces?" And they all looked at me, and I said, "Turn the music on. This is it's one game." Right. So Cespedes came in my office. He said, "You don't mind if we play the music?" I said, "No." The next day, he bought two speakers as big as that billboard right. and put them in the corners of the clubhouse and the music was so loud I couldn't go in there. <laughs> right, that was crazy. Oh my God, but that's how he was. He yeah. was, he, when he first got there, he oh, was, uh, and loved to play, loved right. to play. I told him, I had dinner with him about, uh, about a year ago, I still see him all the right. time, and I had dinner with him and I said, why didn't you want to be the absolute best player in the game? He said, he could have been. Joe, you can't tell me there was a one tool that he didn't have. No, he was unbelievable. I mean, he no, could he was fly, a tremendous play. he had a... Uh, Cannon for an yep, arm, yep, power. Yep, he could yep, hit. Yep. He could field. Yep. I mean, this guy had every every tool there was. The, the one thing that I can't forget with Cespedes is the freaking World Series yeah, he when he butchered well. that play. He did. In center, he was playing he center. Wasn't good. Yeah. He wasn't good in the World Series. Well, the first, but game, yeah, that was game, that was game yeah, one, yeah, right? Game, game one, one to yeah. start the first World pitch. Series. Yeah, first right. pitch. Yeah. He butchered that play in center field. Yeah. That bothered me for yeah. me. Yeah, yeah, but he was he I mean, you talk about dynamic. Yeah. The three home run game in Colorado, I mean this guy was yeah, they remember they were ripping him because he played eighteen holes of golf that day and well, he, he played out eighteen hit. all the time. And he right? won- absolutely. He got up in the morning at seven o'clock and went right. and played golf. He showed right. up at the ballpark and hit three homers. They always and, I, and I'm they supposed were to be mad because he played golf. <laughs> Sal, you were killing him about that. <laughs> probably too, yeah. no. Well, I mean <laughs> probably looking back, yeah. The only thing I'm killing him about you didn't ask me to go play with him. Yeah. I think it was more uh, – yeah. correct me if I'm wrong, Joe. As memory serves, I don't remember ever killing Cespedes in 2015. Why would we? Because he was so good. Maybe it was the year after that he started to get well, banged up a little year. bit. 2016, he was still yeah, good. Yeah, but, but he still was good. hurt. Right. I mean, right. he came back against the Giants, and then once he came back, you guys took off and ended up going right. to the postseason, even though you were shorthanded then too. Right. But I feel like, yeah, we got on him. But it couldn't have been about performance because, it, hey, I don't care how many – holes you play right if you right. show up right. and post the way that he did and, right. and, and perform yeah i wouldn't wouldn't get on yeah now now cespedes was a, what a move that was i know you know it's funny because they play that five days in flushing yes like they play all the uh, time yeah, on it yeah. and we're part of it evan and i are part of that because we're doing i'll never forget it, it was a friday show we're doing the show the day to trade that trade deadline we're doing the show from giant camp right we're at giant camp right out by metlife yep. okay 
And we're just, you know, we Ernie's our producer, Acosta, and we're just doing the countdown. Has it happened? Did they do anything yet? <laughs> you know, right down to the deadline. We didn't think anything was going to happen. We, we had, you know, we didn't think it was going to happen. And, boy, we, when they made the deal, I was delirious. That's that they the got guy. D1 guy to get. And that's the last time they went all in. Right. I missed that. Right. Uh, Javi Baez wasn't all in. 2022, nah, Vogelback. Javi Baez. And, yeah, yeah. And then 2022 when they actually had a team that was in first Vogelback. place. Vogelback. Vogelback oh, and Ruff. God. And then even this year, obviously, less than. But that was exciting back yeah. in 2015. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's you know, fun. I, you know, Joe, I, I will tell you, and I've talked, Sal and I have talked about it. I was the farm director for the Dodgers for seven years. Right. And, that's after you manage the Angels. After I manage the Angels. So, and I will tell you something. My job which to be as farm director is right. to make big major league players. Just right, to produce, right, right, you know, right, right. Get these right. guys to be big league players. Whether they're Dodgers or not, Doesn't who cares? Matter. Exactly. Wherever they because go. my job was to make sure whatever I did helped the big club. So if I may, had a prospect and he, you wanted to trade this guy to go get a piece to, to get in the playoffs, go do it. Because I remember in Houston, when I managed in Houston, we were in first place and Jeff Bagwell broke his hand. So we got, you know, we one of the biggest parts of my team, if not the biggest part of my team. So we had a chance to make a trade, and they wouldn't do it because they didn't want to trade Billy Wagner, who was a double-A starting pitcher right, at the time. Right. And I had a chance to get a premier player for this guy. And I, I always look back, and I, I told Drayton McClendon, I said, you know, Drayton, it's hard to win here in the big leagues. You don't know when the next time's going to happen where you got a chance to win. So... Minor league players, part of their part of the minor league players is to trade these guys to go get a piece so you can win because you don't know if you'll ever get another chance. Right. You know, right. I, I look, I go back on 20, in 2017. My God, in spring training, I got, I got five of the best starting, young starting pitchers in baseball. Three months later, I got one. Yeah. Left. Yeah, no, no, yeah. So you don't never, you never know. You never know. Oh, yeah. Of those, last one from me, Joe, and <clears> I yeah. have plenty more. Of the big three that you had at their peaks, DeGrom, Harvey Syndergaard. You had one game to pitch, one game to win. Who are you going with? Matt Harvey. Really? You right. would have went him over to Grom back then. Well, uh, he was. Yeah. Well, I'm, take, talk, I'm talking about at their peak. <coughs> no, I at know. The, one game to win. Right, right, right. Now, right. got to remember, Jake didn't throw a hundred when I had it. Right. You know, right. he he was a pitcher. This guy he used he, side to the plate, sunk it. Good slider. Actually, had a pretty good curveball back then, and pitched. He, I mean, I, I go, I, I think about Jake Degrom, and the second start he made was, you know, he didn't have very good stuff, and he just kept using his, trying to throw his breaking ball. It wasn't very good, and all of a sudden in the fifth inning it was there, but he, because he kept trying to find the feel for it, find right, the feel right, for it, right. and that's why he was a pitch. But those nights, I go back, what set Matt Harvey apart was the Strasburg game. Yeah. I mean. Look at him eye to eye. Or eye to ha eye. Harvey's better. Two, yeah. Two, yeah two of the, two of the best two young pitchers in the game going head to head, and Matt Harvey was this much better than right. he was. Yeah. Right. A, not, no, no doubt. Plus, he went deeper in the games. I don't know about statistically. Right. But yeah. it felt like DeGrom was brilliant, obviously, for six innings. But Harvey, when he was on, he's going. Like, you're not taking the ball from him. Yeah. The toughness, all that. Stuff. You know more than anybody, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, and that's, <laughs> I'll tell you one night, he was struggling. You know, a year later, he was struggling. And, you know, and everybody, and we, every, they get down on themselves a little right, bit. And I right, walked right. in, and I, and I brought him in my office, and I, got, I have a computer in my office where I, I punched up one of the games that he pitched the year before. I said, that's the guy I want. That with, I want you to walk out there with your head high, just like this. You know, and that's, and that's how he pitched. He didn't care. You know, he gave up a hit. We wouldn't give up another one. Yeah. And I, I will tell you, I, I go back. I took, uh, there was a story years ago about I talked to Don Drysdale about something one day, and he said, you know, when I, was, when I pitched and someone made an error behind me, I got out of that inning. I'm going to bail that guy out. And that's the way Matt Harvey went about things. Somebody, something happened in an inning, Matt Harvey's getting out of it. And I'm going game one of the World Series, right? Yeah. First pitch of the game is an inside the park home run. Says, but it's blew it, yeah. 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 Did yeah. he ever get another one? No, yeah. that was it. Right. When I took him out, it was 2-1. I mean, right. that's... You know, that. And Familia blows that, of course, with that <laughs> damn oh, quick pitch. Whose idea was that, that quick pitch? Well, look, why are you looking at me? <laughs> <laughs> You're telling Familia the quick pitch? No. <laughs> Not in a million years. All right, I'm glad. Not in a million <laughs> years. All right, we'll let, we'll let you... I'm going to let you slide. Good. Talking to Terry Collins, one of the crazy moments of all time as a Met fan, Bartolo Colon's home run in San Diego. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, all right, all right. <laughs> I, I, how how and I love how good was Cologne for the Mets? I mean, he was terrific, tremendous, oh, unbelievable. You, how good he was! I'm going to tell you, Joe. You don't know what he did behind the scenes with this guy. This guy, he made Familia. He made he uh, Hansel Robles. Right. This, this because of Bartolo. Let's Cologne, not get too crazy about Hansel Robles. Yeah, but let me tell you something. When he we first came up, Hansel Robles is one of these guys that you didn't know if he was going to throw five balls in a row. But it without because of Bartolo, right, this guy. Right. 
ideal citizen. And, and, and that's the impact he made. But, you know, he was such a good athlete, even though the size of him. You know that play he made in Miami when he threw the ball behind the back? You know he practiced that? Are you kidding me? No. Really? I'm telling you, this guy, he was so good. And then, but that, he hated hitting. He hated it. Right. I can't, Joe, I can't tell you how many times he'd walk by me going up to the batter's box. He'd say, hey, Terry, I'm not swinging. <laughs> well, he did. I mean, he, he would rarely swing. I know. He hated it. But what happened with this home run? I mean, he, you know, I mean, come on. I mean, that was unbelievable. Uh, you know, Pat Ressler was the assistant hitting coach at the time, and I put Pat in charge of p- pitcher's batting practice. And he told me one day, he said, let me tell you something. This guy's going to ambush somebody one day. And he said, because, Terry, this guy's got mega power. Right. And he said, he's going to ambush yeah, someone. And sure enough, he does. If it, James Shields. Right. And he, he, when he hit that ball, I went, oh, please, God, don't tell me. <laughs> yeah, you know? right. And then, of course, the ball goes out, and now all the players run out of the dugout. And I'm going, I can't run out of the dugout on this guy. Right, so I right, left, right. One, one guy left in the dugout. <laughs> And the look on his face when he, he came back to the dugout, the smirk he had in his face, I, I'll never forget it. Like, oh, my God, that I can't believe goosebumps. That, oh, he was. That is unbelievable. He was, yeah, he was a tremendous man. Uh, Joe, I'm going to tell you, one of, one of the th- and I've told Sal this, we had a game in Anaheim, and our bullpen was shot. We right. used it pretty much. So we're in Anaheim, and Bartolo's pitching, and he gives up two in the first and two in the second, and they're hitting him pretty good. So he comes off the field in the second inning, and he walks up to me and said, let me tell you something. I'm going to get you to the seventh inning. Do not worry about me. You saved that bullpen. That's a pro. Yeah. That's a pro. Yeah. It's just like David. David, when he came back the night he hit the home run, he walked to my office. He'd been out for the entire summer. He walked to my office and he said, I'm really glad to be back. I said, well, we're really glad to have you back. He said, listen, you guys are playing great. Don't worry about me. I'm just here to help. I said, yeah, well, you're going to help because you're hitting third tonight. And right. so what does he do? Hits a home run his first time. Well, he used to kill but, it in Philadelphia. But, but David the, loved hitting Those Philly. are the pros. Those right. are the guys right. who took, put the team first. You know, didn't worry about themselves. They put the team first, and that's how you win with guys like that. Yeah, yeah. no doubt about it. Isn't Cologne still pitching somewhere? <laughs> Isn't he? Wasn't he? he, he, he I'm going to tell you what, he'd win 11 games right now if they <laughs> brought, somebody brought him yeah. to the big leagues. Well, maybe we should bring him here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe we should put him in a rotation. I mean, why not? You know he can still give you six, oh, seven, eight. Yeah, he had kidding? one pitch, sinker, sinker, right, sinker, right, right. sinker, sinker. Right, and, right. Yeah, what are you going to throw him, sinker? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable. So how do you like, again, we're talking to Terry Collins. What's your thoughts? Okay, I want to ask you. I want to, I want to get to the steroid stuff. Because I, I want every steroid guy in the Hall of Fame. I, I am a big, put them all in. You know, let's be honest. These guys, in a lot of ways, uh, you know, uh, the commissioner, you know, is, uh, well, is I, in. Say, yeah. Right? Okay. Seal is in. They, put him in. they couldn't wait to put him in the Hall of Fame. They made all this money in 98 with McGuire and Sosa in a home run chase, right? And then they threw everybody under the bus. They saved the game. Those two guys of course. that year saved the game of right. baseball. Right, You know, after the strike in 94, people stopped coming to the game. Right, And right. so these two guys put on, went on this home run streak. They saved the game. Absolutely. I, I, lived, I was managing the Angels, and I, there was a restaurant, in, 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 I lived in Seal Beach, California. There was a restaurant that Mark used to go to. Right. He started hitting home runs, and there were a thousand people lined up to get a hat from this restaurant. Really? The Navy, there was a Navy shipyard in Seal Beach, and they used to get calls from ships that were coming in. They, we need 2,500 uh, Abbey hats because of Mark McGuire. The, he and Sammy saved the game of no baseball. No doubt. And so to, to sit there and say, and by the way, I will tell you this. Not one time did anybody ever walk in my office and say, by the way, steroids are illegal. We're going to start testing for them. Never did they say that. Never happened, right? Never did they say that. And let's be honest. There's guys in the Hall of Fame that did steroids. Let's be honest about it. There's got to be. Well, I mean, we don't know for sure, but there's got to. But the chances are they are. There's there's a good chance of it. Right. And, you know, and... But and, and it's a grueling season, and so yeah. these guys, you know, they do what they. And that, that's one of the things I thought I really respect Andy Pettit. You know, he said, "Yeah, yeah, I had a sore arm." Yep. And, yep. And so yeah, I, I know this stuff will help me heal faster. It's like, the, and I tell my uh, friends, I live in Florida, and they all talk about steroids. And I said, you know, if you had cancer today, and you were, you find that you're beating cancer, what's the doctor going to give you to rebuild your system up? Steroids. Yeah. Right. Yeah. To, to re- and so these guys, a lot of these guys, they play hurt. And they knew this was, this was the way so they could get by it. And I, and I agree with you, Joe. I, I, I just, Enough. Yeah. Well, right. the, the yeah. fact, see, to me, I try to differentiate. Like, Sammy Sosa. Should be in. Well, in my mind, I don't look at Sosa as a Hall of but Fame you know ball what? player. Let like, me, Bonds, Clemens. Okay, let me stop you yeah, for a second. Ahead. Let's be honest about this, okay? The guy hit 609 career home runs. He's the only guy to hit 60 home runs three different times. But, okay? do, you, but do you think Sosa okay. without PEDs? Like, I, I know Clemens and Bonds were going to be great regardless. Right. Even A-Rod. I think he would have right, been great okay. regardless. I don't think Nobody, Sosa. 
would have been that level. Nobody has been more hosed than Sammy Sosa. Let's well, be Well, McGuire, too. And I, I, okay. and I put McGuire in because I think he, prior right. to Aaron okay. Judge, Mark McGuire is the but greatest he, home run hitter I've ever okay, seen. Okay, but Sammy Sosa, to me, even more so. Okay. But let's be honest. You want to give me Ernie Banks. You want to give me Billy Williams. You want to give me Ron Santo. You want to give me Ryan Sandberg. You want to give me all these guys. They got statues for him at Wrigley. The greatest Cub of all time is Sammy Sosa. Let's be honest about it. And, and, I, and I understand the steroid stuff and all of that, but this guy has been screwed to the max. And, and, and I am, when guys get hosed, okay, I'm, I, I, I wasn't the biggest Beltran fan when he played with the Mets, but after he got hosed with, this, with the Houston thing and, he, and they decided not to make him the manager and all of that, okay, I turned on. Now I love the guy, okay? <laughs> I do. And, and, and the same thing with Sosa. Oh, how about Bonds? And I know you, oh, I you love coached Bonds. Bonds when oh, he my God. I hated him when he played. I love Bonds. I, I love him. Uh, well, well, love Matt, him. I, I lockered next to Barry for five years in Pittsburgh. So, <clears throat> And I will tell you, for five years, if Barry Bonds ever took batting practice, guess who was throwing it? You. Me. Right. I threw to this guy for five years in right. a row, and I used to tease him. I'd say, you know, I, I still see him today. I'm saying, is the check in aisle? <laughs> Is there a check right. coming my way pretty soon? You won three MVPs with me throwing your batting practice. You get along you know? good. What yeah, kind well, of guy is he? Is he a decent guy? Oh, he's a good guy. He is, right? And I'm going to tell you, one day we got, he, we got on the I don't know where we were. We got on the bus going back to the hotel. Right, right. Barry sits next to me. He said, I'm just going to tell you something, TC. I'm going to the Hall of Fame. I said, you don't have to tell me. I watch you every night. Right. This guy did stuff. I saw him, Joe, walk up to pitchers. Right, Hall of Fame right, pitcher, right. Lee, Lee Smith, right. right? One of the greatest relievers of all time. Barry walked up to him one day and he said, Lee, I'm going to tell you something. You don't want to face me tonight. And Big Lee said, yeah, okay, okay, Barry, yeah. okay. Sure enough, ninth inning, here comes this Lee Smith. This is when he was in Pittsburgh. In now. Pittsburgh. Right. Sure enough, ninth inning, here comes Lee Smith. He's with the Cardinals. Here right. comes Lee Smith. Second pitch, Barry hits him in the upper deck and then talked to him the whole way around the bases. <laughs> wow. I told you. I told you. I you didn't want to face me tonight. <laughs> I know. I'm a big Bonds guy. You know what I did? I got a podcast, by the way. I'm going to pop, pop my podcast. I Both of you guys with the podcast. Right. I'm missing I, out. It's called the Yoda Pain Podcast because of the teams I root for, it's nothing but pain. Okay? <laughs> so, no, it's true. But anyway, so anyway, I did it yesterday. I did it, and I, I revealed my all-time non-Hall of Fame team. And I'm going to tell you right now, I will take that team against anybody you want to – the greatest Hall of Famers of all time, let's go play. And I'm not going to break it down now. But, you know, Pete Rose, Barry Bonds, Albert Bell, I mean, Roger Clemens, these guys are – Don Mattingly, Jeff Kent. This is the team. I got yeah, A-Rod. Yeah. A-Rod, okay? yeah. I mean, come Pretty on. good team. You know? Did I tell you about – ever tell you about the time we were playing and, and Albert Bell was in, in Baltimore? We're playing, we're, I'm with managing right, the Angels, right, and I got right. Shigatoshi Hasegawa pitching. Right, And right. Albert Bell has already hit two homers in the game. Right. So he comes up the, up the plate, and he gets drilled. And so everybody's waiting. He's not getting out of the batter's box. So the umpire said, uh, you got to go to first base. He said, I'm not going. I'm hitting. <laughs> <laughs> and the umpire didn't know what to do. He said, you got to go to first. Did he go? Did and he no, he, he said, I'm not going. I'm hitting. I don't care if you hit me or not. Just call it ball one. I don't care what you call it. Really? Yeah. And what do you do with it? I had to come out of the dugout and say, Albert, you got to go, go to first base. Right, right. <laughs> Let me tell you, I had Albert Bell because I'm. A, I, uh. Evan and I were pushing for him to get to the hall. This guy's one of the great right-hand oh, hitters of all God. time. This guy got so the biggest hosing for an MVP <laughs> ever. 1995, the, you know, remember it was only 144 yeah. games that coming back yeah. after the strike. They win 100 games that year, the Indians. 100 out of 144. Bell hits 50 homers and 50 doubles in the same season. Yeah, and they gave great, the man. MVP to Mo Vaughn. What? He was, yeah, he was. Come on. I'll tell you, when he went to the White Sox and you had Frank Thomas and Albert right, Bell hitting back-to-back. Right. -back, oh, yeah, that's pretty that good. That was not comfortable. But I had him on my podcast, Terry. Did you? He did. Yeah. He was tremendous. Oh, he's Albert Bell? Yeah. He was a great oh, I had him he on for like player. an hour and a half. Yeah. Right? Albert Bell. How good yeah, Albert Bell for an hour and a half? I'm going to tell you, you know, Absolutely. one thing about those great. kind of guys. He was great, Sal. You know, there smart are, guy. There are guys smart who play the game who play angry. Right. They play the game angry. I like that sometimes. I loved it. I loved it. I mean, I had guys, I've had guys, My Dave Hollins, you know, say what you want about, this guy played angry. And, you know, guys on our team were yeah, afraid Yeah, with the Dodgers, I'm with the, I remember yeah, the Angels. Philly, with the Angels. Yeah. Oh, the Angels, yeah. okay. And, and, but, you know, there are, I've had been around a lot of guys, when that game starts, man, it's on. It's, yeah. You know, it's on. And when the game's over, they, you know, they try to calm themselves down. Ken Caminiti, he played angry. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that's, uh, and you had to play right. If he you, passed away now. I know, but when you, when, when he, I had him in Houston. I had him. Right, right. When, if you didn't play the game right, Ken had something to say about it. Very quietly, he'd walk right. up to you in your locker and he'd say, 
can we, can I see you in the weight room for a minute? And get right in. So I had, you know, I had uh, Mitch Williams, and Mitch didn't care for me too much. I, Mitch, I didn't. Mitch him. was an interesting dude, you know, huh? Yeah. So one night, Mitch got angry with me and came in my office and wanted to beat my little ass. But um, <laughs> I walked. I had the door closed. When I opened the door, Ken came in. And he's standing in the doorway, and he said, "How can you lock the door?" I said, "I didn't lock the door. I didn't even know it was, you know." And he looked at Mitch. He got right in Mitch's face. He said, "You know what? The next time you come in here, you better be getting people out." <laughs> I said, pretty good. this guy can play for me forever, <laughs> ever. I don't care what he did good. wrong. Yeah. He, was yeah. a, he was a man's man. Boy, yeah. I love him. Yeah. Uh, hey, yeah. look, I mean, uh, I'm into men's men, that's for sure. No doubt about that. That's good. Terry, I'm, we could go on for hours here, man. Yeah, you got to go on this podcast. You do well, an hour I'm and a half. Man. You're almost doing it here. We got to take a break, I think. Oh, we got to take a break yeah. now? You know what? It's, it's pretty funny you say that. He's on You're the radio supposed to that say that. That's all right. They can yeah. dump it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I right. hope they dump it. <laughs> it's all right. That's all right. Yeah, yeah Nick, no, we'll Nick can you dump slide. that. Yeah, yeah, okay, Nick good. Good. But glad. yeah, we got to do the podcast. I'd love to come on. I'd love to have you on. go on and on. I'd love to have you on. That would be a blast. All right, TC. We appreciate the time very much. guys. Terry, thank you. And by the way, Thank you for thank you for the service with my my baseball team. Okay, you thank bet. you so much. My hey, pleasure. I, Appreciate I, I it. said it before, BT uh, JB. Yep. yep. Joe yep. Winning. I do do yeah. the show with BT. So That's all right. Be, Joe, be, just we, remember he's better looking than me. <laughs> <laughs> we said it before. Terry Collins, one of two managers in the history of the Mets yep. franchise, yep. to take the team to consecutive postseason appearances. Yep. Yeah. Thank you for that. You know, help, and the you last know. to take him to a World Series. Thank you yeah, for and that. you know what helped. Really good players. Yeah, 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 yeah right. <laughs> not, not John Mayberry Jr. batting cleanup. John, yeah, it's Mayberry. all right. Remember yeah, that? Yeah, That's right. Yeah, oh yeah. my the God! The greatest managers in the game were really smart when they had good players. That's exactly <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. That's exactly right. All right, we'll come we're back. Taking a guys. break. Well, yeah, we'll get some calls when we come back. Beat. Uh, darn it, Joe B. Yes. and Sal on the fan. You can call me BT. He's better looking. You know. <laughs> 